Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Today I'm at Zamperini Field in Torrance. The crowds are gathering. There is a lot of excitement in the air. That's because the B-17 bomber is here for its annual tour and we're going to climb aboard with some World War II pilots and a Peninsula High senior who's going to join me to fly for the first time on the Flying Fortress. Well, today we have several veterans out, one who actually flew on the B-17, not our B-17, but B-17s a while back, and they are talking about what they've done. We're going to send a flight up to kind of signal to everybody in the Torrance area to come out to the airport. And then starting tomorrow and for the rest of the weekend, we will have flights offered for passengers in the morning and then ground tours in the evenings every day. So for the community watching that missed out on this opportunity, how can they um, take advantage of it in the future? Well, we're going to be at several California stops through the next few weekends, so um, visit our website, b17.org, that's b17.org, to check on those dates. And on that website, you'll also find lots of interactive ways to learn more about what we do. You told me you got your pilot's license several years ago. For you, what is so exciting about flying on the B-17? Well, the V-17 is so different than any kind of aircraft that you get in modern day because it's made in old sheet metal, it was made of different time that's rugged, just efficient, and so it's got this loud noise to it that's sort of friendly. You walk through this creaky plane and you feel connected to actually just being in the air and moving around. You really feel that you're flying as opposed to, you know, getting on an airline or something. You don't know that you're in the air. And this way, you really do. And you and you start to wonder about what it must have been like. So, right. Just talking to um, one of the veterans about that and just the fact that it's called the Flying Fortress. That alone makes me feel safe up there. It is a very safe, happy airplane. It feels strong around you. And now today, um, years later, since these have been retired, um, it's a flying museum. It is. It's a national treasure to really keep it flying because it speaks to a time when so many forces in history came together to create and change everything, and the world was an entirely different place after it. I was a ball, tur ball turret gunner on one on the bottom. So what, so what did that involve when you were being a ball turret gunner? What, what was it like for you up there? What were you doing? Well, I was just, I, well, I was just a regular gunner. Just a regular gunner. I stayed in that position for eight, nine hours, whatever the mission was. You stayed in that cramped position. You couldn't move. You couldn't even take your parachute in there. You know, we have, we have chest chutes. I couldn't even carry this how, how small it is in there. I, good thing that I was the size I was because I, I don't know how I would have done it in there. So, but, uh, Bombardier used to show, tell me, said, show me in the map where they wanted a bomb, you know, what they wanted to hit. And so when I, I point my guns towards the bomb bay, and I watch the bombs go down, and I watch and see where they hit, and then I tell them, I say, it's about where you hit or something like that. So, but I got to see all this show. It's all experience. I was a, just a little old country boy, you know, just didn't know any better, I guess. <laughs> so is this the first time you're going up again in a B-17 since you flew how many years ago? Ooh, I, I, got, I got back. I, I came home in February of 45. So this should be exciting and emotional, like you say. Yeah, oh yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, I know, I, 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 I can't even tell you how I want to feel <laughs> until I get back. <laughs> I flew uh, 17 combat missions in late 1944, and on Christmas Eve of 44, uh, which was during the Battle of the Bulge, when von Rundstedt made his push through the Ardennes, we were on a frontline support mission, and on takeoff, we had full bombs, gas, and a lot of ice on the wings, and the airplane just couldn't gain enough altitude taking off of a short runway. We hit the trees at the end of the runway at about 125 miles an hour, and I ended up in the hospital for quite a while. Two of the boys were killed, but the rest of them went ahead and finished their 35 missions. So uh, I stayed in the reserve and flew uh, uh, other airplanes, but I, uh, fortunately I got out before the Korean War started, so I did not see service there. But I did fly, I have about 400 hours of flying in the B-17. Uh, this particular airplane uh, was built uh, too late to enter the combat. But uh, I have a lot of time in a combat-type B-17. 
here we are today. We're all about to go up. We brought a high school student along, yeah. hoping to get this generation to really understand about what you did and the history and the importance of these air, these aircrafts. Yeah. Now, why? What is so important well, about the Flying Fortress? Well, one thing I want this young man to understand: I was two weeks out of high school when I went into pilot training. I got my wings when I was 19. I started flying combat in my early 20s. Uh, actually, we flew a B-17 across the Atlantic Ocean uh, just by our navigator doing what's called sun shots. It was a daytime flight across the Atlantic. And we were all in our early 20s. Um, or even one of the crew, one of the boys that was killed was still in his teens, the, t the ball turret gunner. And um, it's hard to believe when you look at a young man like that, that that was about how old I was when I started flying. Are you excited about going up? You said you've been going up yes, in these I've from been time up to time. In this air, particular airplane, I think this is my fourth time, and I enjoy it immensely every time. Usually they let me ride right behind the pilots so I can watch all the instruments and see exactly what they're doing. These are professional pilots. We were just young kids. Like, we thought we were in our Model T forts flying, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. We just, they told us what to do and we did it and that was it. But these people, they never make a bad landing. I'm here now with Theo Wendorf, a senior at Peninsula High and also the president of the student body. We recruited you to go up with me. It's going to be a first time for me and a first time for you. What are you thinking right now? I am completely just so excited. Um, it was just a pleasure to meet our our pilot here um, who actually flew during the war and this is just such a amazing moment for me. Super excited. What do you know about World War II history and about this flying fortress, the B-17? Have you learned much in school about this? Yeah, last year I was able to take an um, advanced history course um, and we spent quite a period of time on World War II. Um, I've also read the book by Louis Zamperini um, and it, it is just such an interesting time and such a, such a really cool thing to think about and put yourself in that experience. What are you expecting this experience is going to be like? Of course we're going to get you when you come down. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like it's just kind of going to take my breath away. Um, I'm really excited to just kind of imagine myself as, um, as our pilot here was saying, as he was in my position years ago. Okay, so we made it up. We made it down back here with Theo on the ground. Talk about the experience for you. It was just truly incredible uh, to take off, to feel all the different emotions, to hoot and holler up there, stick my head out the top. It was just really incredible. Give our viewers a little play-by-play. -play. You know, we first sort of sat there. We got, it gets noisy, as you can hear it now. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we sat there. I could imagine myself like a young recruit sitting there, earnest, Create, like scared to go into battle um, and we went right up turned and as soon as we were in the air they said hop on up and we could walk around got to walk see different views from the front gigantic windows um, as you uh, now have this experience um, 
you talked about that you want to be a mechanical engineer because you're colorblind you could never be a pilot but this experience is going to affect your future oh yeah um, I am just infatuated with the way that they used to do these things in World War II in the 40s it was so simple and it's just it gets my mind going to see all the, the way things work and this is just truly a marvel you're saying the mechanics are really simple in there you know you see this sort of basic wires and oh yeah, yeah they said if you grab onto the wires, the pilots might be scared because it'll affect the rudders. So, it, it's really incredible. Well, as this next flight's about to take off, anything you want to say? I just gives me so much respect for this this generation that that fought, and what an awesome experience. Well, no doubt being aboard the Flying Fortress, as Theo said, was an experience of a lifetime. It was like being on a flying museum. And you can get lots more information by going to the B17.org website. Thanks for joining us here on Around the Peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. See you next time. Happy flying.